welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Caitlin and I am Nerd Ella Mode and this is my best friend Tia. We've been best friends for over 10 years now and uh, I love her to pieces and she is my soul and my heart and my life and I can't live without her. So today I figured instead of going and instead of totally trashing her face like I did last time, uh, which I will link up here for you. You're welcome. Um, I am actually going to be doing her makeup viewing this today. And we are going to be using some fun products, a little high end, a little low end, Elf J Kissa, Physician's Formula, Cover Girl. It's going to be good. It's all cruelty free as always. And Tia has prepped her skin. She has normal to dry skin. So she uses the Drops of Light line from the body shop and also um, has prepped her skin. What moisturizer did you say you use? All of his Drops of Light. Okay, all of his Drops of Light. Except for the e.l.f. primer. And then she used the e.l.f. I believe. Tone correcting. Yeah, tone correcting primer, which is the lavender one. And um, it helps with redness, helps even out the skin tone a little bit, helps with pores, so it's really good. Which FYI, you can only get drops of light in Canada, which sucks. Yes, so I'm her supplier. Mm -hmm. Hit me up if you need the good shit. So because her skin is already prepped, I am going to jump right in with foundation. We are gonna be using a mixture today because I color matched her earlier. And I also did a test patch to make sure that she wasn't going to react to anything. Both of us have very sensitive skin, um, so probably about an hour to an hour and a half before um, we sat down. I had her do a bunch of test patches along her jawline. That's the best way to color match somebody. Um, we are best friends, so I don't mind putting my own collection on her face. But if you are going to be color matching somebody that you don't know, always put a little bit on your hand and then put it on their face. Um, because this one, the Healthy Foundation from Physicians Formula, this is in LC1, which is very cool, and Tia has a very neutral undertone. I do. Yes. Oh. Um, <laughs> you're not pink, you're not olive, and you're not yellow. You have but very... I am kind of pink. That's why I use all the color correcting stuff, because I'm red. Well, yeah, but the pigmentation in your skin is different than the actual undertone of your skin tone. Oh. Um, and then I'm also going to be using a little bit of the Fenty um, Pro Filter Foundation in 100. This is hella light and it only oxidizes a little bit when it dries down. Um, so I'm just going to be basically using it to not only mattify this a little bit so that it lasts a little longer because we do have a pretty busy day, but also to help it color match a little bit better. I find that using a sponge um, on somebody else is the best way because it's really gentle. Again, for people who have very sensitive skin, sometimes some bristles can give them a reaction or sometimes um, just the buffing motion can irritate their skin a little bit. So a sponge, if you are, um, if you are using this on like friends or clients, I find a sponge just to be the most gentle and your the least likely to get a reaction from using it. I'm not gonna give you a reaction. I didn't mean an emotional reaction. <laughs> <laughs> and I would definitely suggest working in small layers opposed to globbing it on all at once, not only because you don't want the foundation to dry in weird patchy spots, but you also do want this to look as much like skin as possible it's going to give you the most natural look. Although and you and I love full coverage. Yes, we definitely love full coverage, but I'm definitely more of a, I like a highly pigmented foundation, not a thick foundation. I am gonna be using a stick concealer today. This is the Fenty Beauty Match Stick in Ivory. I'm gonna be using this as, they are magnetic. Um, I'm going to be using this as her concealer and then I'm going to be using the one in amber as her contour. I find that if you use cream products with a sponge, it really sinks into the skin. Again, it's going to give you that really skin-like finish. 
on a day-to-day -day basis tia doesn't do necessarily like a full glam look it's more an everyday look using a bb cream and you know mascara and chapstick that sort of look it's very natural and very pretty and fresh faced so i still want to keep that for her because unfortunately if you do start piling products on a lot of times you can age yourself and your foundation can start looking <laughs> i'm already 30. Oh, and 28 and she's shut up she's already looking old shut up she's already aging before my eyes Rude. <laughs> so we don't want to do that to tia's skin we don't want to do that to anybody's skin but especially we don't want to go on, on our clients we don't want them to look in the mirror and go oh my god like i've aged 10 years sort of thing i'll look up Something that you can do with the matchsticks is you can warm them up with the warmth of your hand. You can either go and you can either use this that's on your hand, especially if you're working with a client, use it with a sponge or your finger, or you can just go straight in with a stick and that'll be warm and a little bit more emollient so it won't tug around the sensitive eye area. And Tia does have a lot of um, blue around her eyes. I do? Yes. Um, so using a more yellow-based concealer is really going to cancel that out. Look at your eyes. You can see the blue right in the inner corner. Oh, okay. Is that what you call it? Mm-hmm. <coughs> so use something, using something peach is going to help cancel out her veins. I don't have a peach concealer with me today. I was gonna say, that's how you know Too Faced is like extreme full coverage, cause I use Too Faced and that goes away. I don't yeah. know if it's yellow, I just like it. I just use their fair. Yeah. The, in the born this way, right? Yeah. Look up. Now I'm going to contour. I find that for me personally, um, I find that using a, um, a cream contour is going to be, <laughs> I find that using a cream contour is significantly, um, more natural appearing and especially when you are trying to emphasize your features you don't necessarily want to go and for me for example if you look at my face i have a very round shaped face so when i go and when i contour i only contour back here and here and then i do my cheekbones i don't go and i don't contour right here underneath my chin because when because i do have a double chin it then looks like it basically makes it stand out more because it kind of looks like I have a beard or like peach fuzz down there. So going and emphasizing your jawline is going to help bring more attention to the fact that you have a jawline and that your face is a little bit more chiseled, um, even if you are carrying a little bit more weight in kind of the center neck region of your face. We're gonna go here and here. And then I'm gonna feel for no cheekbones. Her cheekbones. They are non existent. They're there. You just gotta feel for them. Just gotta get in there. So now I'm gonna be taking a powder foundation. Again, I want to build the coverage in small layers. <coughs> So I'm going to be using an XO Beauty powder brush and the Pixie Color Correcting Powder Foundation and Number One Cream. And again, I'm not swiping this. I'm really patting it in. Not only will swiping, again, possibly irritate the other person's skin, but it also could remove all of the work that you just did. We are going to be doing several layers of setting spray today. We are. Yes. Holy moly. Um, so that this doesn't move. So now to bring structure to her eyes, we're going to do her brows. 
Um, I personally am completely in love with micro brow pencils. I like the one from NYX, the one from Anastasia Beverly Hills, and also the one from e.l.f. Currently I am testing out the CoverGirl one. Um, it is the Ultra Fine Brow Pencil in 710 Soft Brown. Now Tia's hair, as you can tell, is a little bit darker than mine, so this matches my brows perfectly. So just to deepen up her brows just a little bit to make sure that they match her hair and they're not going to look too ashy and pale. I am going to be using the Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Mascara in Nothing But Brunette. I'll just go and I'll follow the natural shape of your brow. And then if anything is different, then you can So today, because Tia normally does do more of a natural makeup look, generally doesn't really use like eyeshadow and stuff like that. Um, I have an itchy nose. <laughs> I am going to be using the e.l.f. J. Kissa palette on it. Um, I really want to work on with, it. I'm an it. On her. <laughs> I messed up. Okay. <laughs> I'm, just... I'm not even a human. Tia is a, I'm a dog mom. She's a dog mom. She's a dog lover. Mm -hmm. Her baby's name is Carly. Well, she has, she has two babies. She has Carly and she has Teddy. Carly is a lab, right? Yellow lab. Yeah, she's a yellow lab. And she's got a cute little pink nose and it's adorable. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna kiss her! And then Teddy is a, a shouty, that's what I call her. <laughs> but she's a Shih Tzu Yorkie? Yep, she's a Shorty. Shorty! She also has a cute nose. Let I smoosh. Smoosh, smoosh. Gonna feel wet. Now I'm gonna go back in with the danger shade. And I'm gonna make sure that the blend on it is really, really seamless. So that there's not just a harsh line of pigment where one shade stops and the other one starts. Okay, right, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna have Tia pop on the blue eyeliner from the J Kiss at Elf collab, and also um, I don't know if she's gonna use her mascara, the Tarte one, or if she's gonna use the CoverGirl Exhibitionist mascara because this is the black black metal, and we're gonna go on bronzer. This is the Butter Bronzer in the shade Light Bronzer. Butter. Have you used this before? Yeah. Oh, it smells like butter-ish. Like, like a tropical butter. Yeah, like a butter. Butter. <laughs> so this is a Morphe E34 brush. And... I am going to do this around her forehead and her temples just to help warm her face up, warm her complexion up. I thought, I thought bronzer and contour is like are technically the same thing. If you have a warm undertone to your skin, then you can use bronzer and contour as the same thing. Mm -hmm. But um, bronzer is always very warm and is supposed to imitate being in the sun whereas contour is supposed to be a shadow i always go and i always start from the temples and work my way down because i don't want blotches of pink on the cheeks so i've tapped off the excess and then i'm going to gently sweep the color down to the center of her face also if you go and if you actually look at yourself after you've done something like run or you know you're in the wind or something like that where you would get naturally flushed um you generally have a lot of redness up here um and then it goes into the cheek area and your chin and your nose I'm going to be using um, a mixture of Physician's Formula and 23 as her highlight today. We want to do setting spray. You can't be dry. So we're going to do the setting spray now that the <clears throat> mascara is dry. <clears throat> okay, 
if you do get any splotches then all you have to do is take your beauty sponge and go over them it's also a good idea to do this it helps all the little baby hairs on the face settle in go like this with your chin if you have any creasing or anything like that it also helps with that there we go so now I like using this. This is in pearl. Um, I like using it with my finger. Um, you can obviously go and you can obviously use this with a beauty blender or something like that. I just find it looks the most natural and really melts into the skin if you use the heat of your hand. So I am not a big... Ooh, my stomach is cold. Um, I'm not a big advocate of taking the shade all the way down um, onto the cheeks necessarily. Ooh, look at that. Mm -hmm. I can see that without my glasses. <laughs> it's a very blinding highlight. And this also, because it has that pearl, it has pink and purple in it. So it's really going to bring out and complement the sway and the danger in her eyes. I have sway and danger in my eyes. So I'm really just focusing this on her orbital bone. Not only is it going to make her cheekbone pop more and give more definition to her face, but it's also, again, going to complement the eye area and it's not going to emphasize her pores. And now I'm gonna go in with 23 and I'm gonna go in with a very kind of loosey, long, floofy brush. I'm just gonna hit the brow bone and around the orbital bone. going to do the tip of her nose as well as her cupid's bow. You really want to highlight anything that you want to bring to the forefront. It's going to help make the lips look a little bit bigger, especially emphasizing that cupid's bow and bring a little bit more attention to the nose and the fact that it sticks out from the face and you're not just like on a flat plane. I'm going to go back in with my sponge just again to push down those baby hairs. Everyone has them. So I'm gonna go, because I went so bold on the eyes, we're gonna go neutral and really um, like soft and shimmery on the lips. This is the Give Me Glow Cosmetics in Girls Night. It's a liquid lipstick. And we're gonna be going over that with the Hank and Henry Lip Luster in Your Mom. <laughs> This is the finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you are notified every, every single time I post a makeup related video. I hope you enjoyed seeing me and my beautiful interact. And I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. Bye.